All right, so we are back and I'm here from San Juan, Puerto Rico, just after the unfortunate main event in Jake Paul versus Ryan Borland. And usually I wouldn't say that, but one of the craziest things I've ever seen in professional boxing just happened and we have to break the entire thing down. I'm talking the entire card, the main event, fighters on the undercard, Jake's fight, all of it. What just happened? The breakdown, let's go. All right, so let's let's just start with the crazy chaotic news that we just got uh, in the main event of this massive card for Puerto Rico. Amanda Serrano, Nina Meinke was supposed to be the main event. It was supposed to be the fight that everyone was coming to watch, and unfortunately, and it's just so heartbreaking for Amanda Serrano. The fight gets canceled the day of the fight. Not only the day of the fight, mere minutes before it's about to go on. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this, especially in the sport of boxing. Like you've seen some pretty impactful moments in sports that came out of nowhere, like Lou Gehrig announcing he has Lou Gehrig's disease. And this is not necessarily as, as serious as that. Or Magic Johnson announcing his retirement after a sting positive for HIV. There's Michael Jordan retiring from basketball altogether to go play baseball. These were monumental announcements that no one saw coming. And granted, the Amanda Serrano unfortunate circumstance is not that, but it is for her that kind of feeling. And again, I, I'm operating on speculation here, so don't take this as bond, but this is what I've been hearing, that Amanda Serrano apparently got her hair dyed for this fight. And as she went on a run a couple of days ago or yesterday, I'm not sure, some of that dye started leaking into her eye and she started having problems, I think, with her peripheral vision. And I don't wanna, again, mistake what the actual diagnosis is, but it's something to do with her cornea. And uh, from what I understand, they were trying to work on it and figure out a way to get her to fight all the way up until we heard the announcement, or at least I did, right before it was supposed to go on. Like, we were on comms on the, the, the Zone broadcast being like, Wade, you're gonna send it into a ring for a special announcement because here's what's going on. So we are all, myself, everybody that's on the production, I guess the people that are on camera, we're all shocked to hear it as well because we're preparing for the main event, here we go. So like I said, it's just heartbreaking because you watch Amanda in the ring and she's just pouring out her heart to the people of Puerto Rico. Yeah, Trinidad come in as well and he's crying and it was just it was just an emotional scene that I don't think I've ever seen before. So my heart goes out to Amanda, her team, because I know there's nothing other than a fighter's fight in the heart of Amanda. Serrano. There's nothing more than Puerto Rico in her heart. So if there was anything that could have been done to um, to stop that from happening, then I think that she would have done that. But it's just, it's one of those unfortunate circumstances. I will say this. It's so frustrating to see in my comment section or in Twitter comments or things like that when I say something that I genuinely mean and I just see all of the bullshit from some of you guys. But I genuinely think that it was a, a great move from MVP to refund fans. I thought that was a classy move and it's just like I said an unfortunate circumstance but like I said I think Amanda will be back I don't think this will stop her and where she does end her run it'll be with the same pride the same fighting spirit and the same legendary status that she's acquired throughout her career so I don't expect anything other than Amanda will be back but we did have the rest of the card to talk about outside of that there were some storylines coming into this one being Javon Wana Walton this was a kid that I looked at and said man he's got real star potential and I don't mean star is in he's the next Bud Crawford or he's the next Hank or even Carmel Moulton or Ashton Silva or anyone like that. I mean this kid has a look to him, has an energy to him, carries himself in a certain way that whatever he wants to do, if it's continued in the box, right now it doesn't look like he's at the level where you consider him a blue chip prospect, but he could be a star that could do the boxing thing into the Hollywood scene, we've seen Euphoria, but this fight was a bit of a wake up call for the young guy. I think that this was something that maybe was a little too much too soon, even though his opponent was 0-1-1. One and one. He wasn't the greatest fighter in his own right. This was a 17 year old kid that did have a lot of hype behind him and a lot of build and you know, potentially the future of boxing, and that may still be the case. But when I saw Javon Wana Walton in that ring, I saw a kid, a 17-year-old that was nervous, that didn't necessarily possess the skills to overmatch his own nerves, and didn't follow the game plan that clearly they tried to set out, and also just didn't have a great performance. It, the moment got to him, and him being 17 years old in front of 15 to 16,000 people, that didn't help things. That's got to feel... Just like a submarine underwater, it's so pressurized that moment. And also, I'll say this, I could not believe the Puerto Rican crowd booing Javon Juana Walton. And I heard some people online say, oh, it was because he was pushed to this massive prospect. He was told us he was gonna be the future of boxing. Bullshit. 
they started booing him about 30 seconds into the fight. I felt that was extremely harsh, and I don't think he deserved that at all. In fact, I thought he fought, at least to his level, in a fashion that was, no, not his best fight, but it certainly wasn't worth getting booed almost every single second of that fight. I saw people online calling for his next fight to be people that absolutely he should not be fighting. But then I also saw some interesting stuff, you know, talk about the crossover scene and Dean the Great's name got thrown out there. I don't even know if I would mind that fight. Again, I think he's a little too young to be in that position, but he does have an amateur career and I don't know that they want to go that route, but there, there are some names and in crossover boxing, he kind of would fit that mold, right? He's a movie guy. He's also doing the boxing thing. And it may not be a bad idea. We'll see if MVP entertains that, but I do think that you might want to scale back for Javon Wanna Walton what your expectations are going forward because it was clear he wasn't ready for that moment. At 17 years old, it might be a while before he actually is. But then the co-main event that turned into the main event, Jake Paul, Ryan Borland, this was exactly what you expected. Now, Jake said round two knockout. I tried not to give a prediction because I am working the shows and somehow that turns into me being a dick eater, which is, again, the silliest thing in influencer boxing and part of the reason that I get so burned out on things. But outside of that, I thought that Jake looked big. When I saw him at the weigh-in, when I saw him at the presser, I thought he had put a lot of size on. And obviously so. This is a guy that has continued to go up in weight, and I don't know if he's going to stick at cruiserweight. I don't know if he's going to come down. But and yes, once I did see Ryan Borland in person, I already knew this was going to be a pretty early fight, which again, I don't try to give predictions for, or at least I try to avoid it because of the bias and the dick eating and all the stuff that comes with it. But I had a feeling Jake was going to end this fight early and it was going to be dangerous. And that's exactly what it was. First round, Ryan Borland gave Jake almost nothing to be afraid of. Again, it wasn't working his jab. There was a couple of shots that got through, but Jake is eating those and walking through them. It wasn't a consistent tempo. He was on his back foot. Jake was controlling everything with his lead foot. He's controlling it with the double jab and the right hand to the body. And it was clear from about 30 seconds in that Jake was far better than he was. And so Jake follows up. I don't know what the time frame was for the amount of time it took Jake to knock him out, but it was a couple of vicious shots that Jake missed that I thought if he landed, Ryan Borland's head might have fallen off his shoulders. One was an uppercut that I think he missed and then a right hand he shot over the top, but eventually he swarmed Borland and got him out of there. It was pretty easy work. It was smooth. And listen, you have to call a spade a spade here. This was not even close to remotely a challenge for Jake in this fight. Like Ryan Borland showed up overweight for what he usually fights at. And yes, that is where Jake wants to fight. So you have to be there. You're going to get knocked out fucking cold. But it looked like the lights were too bright. It looked like he was in a moment that he had never experienced and was not prepared for in the least. And that's not... Again, necessarily a knock on Jake as much as it is just guys are not ready for this kind of big stage at whatever point in their careers because they haven't done this. They've fought, yes, they have experience fighting, but they don't have that kind of experience and that only really belongs to Jake. He is the one that when he started his career was fighting in front of this many people. So that's a massive factor in these fights, but it's also such a tough question to answer. Genuinely, and I know people don't like me saying stuff like this, but it's just, what do you do with Jake Paul right now? It's a genuine question that I don't have the answer to. I know it's the way I end my videos, but I don't. I, like the rest of you guys, want him to take that step up, and I genuinely think he wants to do that. I think he wants to take steps up. I think he wants to take tough fights. I just don't know how you determine what that is, because there is a pendulum here. The community or the people outside of it don't want him to fight MMA fighters. But in retrospect, those MMA fighters gave Jake tougher challenges than the boxers. And all I remember from those fights with the MMA fighters was that Anderson Silva was too old, Nate Diaz was too old, Tyron Woodley was too old, or didn't have as much experience as Jake did as a boxer, and that goes for all three. But yet, those were three of his tougher opponents. Now, granted, Tommy is the toughest, right? Tommy is the, the one loss. So the only real answer I have as to what you do about Jake, because yes, I'm in the same boat. When I watched that fight tonight, Jake was clearly better than Ryan Borland, and I expected him to be, because again, I think Jake is progressing at a rate that does surpass a lot of the experience that some of these guys do have, but at the same time, he's still so new that you can't throw him in there with some of the things that are being thrown around. Like Eddie Hearn said about the Olympian he wants to throw Jake in there with, or some of the guys that are way past Jake's level at this point. I, it's just a weird spot for him to be in. I genuinely don't know what you do. I want to see him continue to progress. I do want to see him take that next step up because this was not a step up from Andre August. And unfortunately for Jake, it's a knock that he's going to have to continue to live with until... I don't know. Like Part of me thinks that people just want him to lose, so they're saying that. But the other part of me goes, yeah, no, you're right. Like There does need to be some sort of next step that does challenge Jake in a way that he hasn't been challenged since the Tommy fight. And since the fights before that, because 
Jake was challenged. He was pushed by Anderson. He was pushed by Tyron. He was at least somewhat pushed by Nate. And of course, the Tommy Fury fight showed some of the holes in his game. These fights after that are, yes, a bit for Jake to get his confidence back and also for him to get back in the gym and really hone in on his craft. And I think that's the most important thing out of these fights, which does go unseen, is that he is getting time in the gym. That is the big takeaway, at least in my opinion, because of the reps and the experience and building things from the ground up. You're seeing Jake reinvent his boxing style in these fights and again you're not seeing a lot of it because it's over like that but it does have to be a step up i'm with you guys there what i can't stand though is the constant moaning about what it is that you all want because you don't have the answers just like i don't no one knows what to do with jake or at least no one genuinely tries to understand it it's just we want this. When you get that, it's not enough. Now you want this. You want Jake to challenge someone. Tyron Woodley, Nate Diaz, Anderson Silva. That's not enough. Pro boxer, Tommy Fury, Andre August, Ryan Borland. I agree with you. The last two, not the level of Tommy Fury, but that's not enough. Now we have to push him to a new height. I even saw a box rec. Rank him at 110 at cruiserweight, and Vidal is right there at 109. That is no pun intended bizarre bark stuff. It's That's in no way, shape, or form where at least in my opinion, Jake should be right. People aren't going to like this, but I also do commend Jake for continuing to try. And I'll say this genuinely, I don't think Jake is a guy, just like I don't think KSI is a guy that wants to genuinely take easy fights. Let's not forget that Jake accepted the Tommy Fury fight before JJ. It turns out that was a really tough fight for him. And also for JJ, it wasn't an easy fight. Those two guys are still trying to figure out where they're at in all this landscape. And unfortunately, we can't just have them run it because I can guarantee you that KSI would give him a better fight than those two. I, I, I genuinely think that KSI would have given him a better fight than Andre August and Ryan Boyd. It sucks that we can't get that fight, but I don't know what Jake and them do next. I think they said they want to do another one of the pro boxing road to the championship fights, and I am 100% okay with that because I see the trajectory and I see where it links up with other pro boxers who did this same thing in their pro careers, just not under the bright spotlight that Jake, unfortunately for him, always has on him. He is taking the same fights that people at his same experience level, with more experience actually, as amateurs would take, but the position he's in is one of the toughest ones, just like KSI and all the other influencers, you don't get that luxury. So yeah, I don't know if it's like this similar level of Tommy Fury style of fight and age and experience that they do next, or if it's just Tommy Fury that they do that. I have no idea. I don't think they really know either. I think there's there's gonna be a period here for them to go and figure that out. But regardless, yes, I continue to be impressed with Jake's growth in camp. The things that I'm seeing him do, even in the ring, setting up the double jab right hand. And granted, this was one way traffic and there's not a lot to take away, which is why I still say, I have no idea where Jake's ceiling is. I know it's not an answer y'all wanna hear, but that's just is what it is. And lastly, I can't believe we have to talk about this, but once again, Ryan Garcia has lost his mind. On Twitter, immediately after the fight, he calls out Jake and says he's so sorry that he introduced Jake to boxing, which he didn't, that was KSI and Deji. And then says he's going to end all of this shit, that Jake should contact his team, and that he's going to stop it all in a fight, and that Jake is ruining boxing and disrespecting the sport. As if Ryan Garcia, when you look through his record, did not start his career, by the way, after an illustrious amateur career that went on for at least eight to nine years in the USA boxing system, and then as a professional, had a similar trajectory at this point point in his career. It's, it's just the baffling part about this whole thing. Like Ryan Garcia got to have these moments without that big crowd that Jake is going through right now with a ridiculous amateur career before. So that. again, I know how this is going to sound, Wade defends whatever, but I'm going to stand up for what's right and say that Ryan Garcia has no business talking about disrespecting the sport because Jake has fought a similar level of competition that he and many other boxers have earlier in their career without an amateur career. It just seems to me like Ryan is saying outlandish things and continues to do so to gain attention and notoriety outside of the fact that he has a massive fight coming up and it feels like he'd rather not focus on that as much as he does Jake Paul, Bryce Hall, his girl fighting on Misfits, all these different things to reach for because one thing is clear, the focus is not on Devin Haney, it's everywhere else. But yeah. I mean, that is where we end it. What a night it was, what a card it was. And I will say this at the end of this, um, 
I didn't have my best night tonight. And I realized that there were some moments where I just I felt so off. I could not get it going. I didn't feel in rhythm. I am in a different role now in some of these shows with the zone where I'm, I'm basically filling that Ade Oladipo role. Those are big shoes to fill. I am nowhere close to being able to fill them. And I just I hope to get the opportunity to keep working on my craft because I know it's somewhere in there and I'm trying to build toward it, but no excuses. I just, I, I had a bad night. It was not my best night on the mic. and. I apologize to those that tuned in. I appreciate you guys if you did. But I will be better. Thank you guys for continuing to support um, the ones that do. Regardless how you feel about you know whatever happened tonight at the show, the, the biggest thing to me remains that Amanda Serrano is a fighter's fighter, a true champion, and I just I feel heartbroken for her. Do you want to see what's next with Jake? Depending on what route they go, pro boxer, money fight, regardless, like I said, it's got to be the next step up. And then Javon Wanna Walt, I think maybe you take a couple steps back with him. I think you put him in some shows that aren't necessarily as many eyes on those. And maybe an MVP prospect series could be in the next place Javon goes or something else. But get the kid reps and get him comfortable again. Get his confidence back and we'll see what happens with him. But all these things... What happens with Jake next? Juana Walton, Amanda Serrano, Ryan Garcia, influencer boxing. I, I don't have those answers. It's going to be an interesting 2024 because the game is evolving. And one small misstep or one small mistake from anybody in this game could flip it on its head. So there's a lot to get to. We're just starting the year out. What happens next in all cases? Let me get my ass to sleep here in San Juan. Maybe when I'm rested and back home, I guess we'll find out.